Well, Drizzy, it's been a really good week. The Eagles had a win. Freo had their cheeks clapped. But most importantly, I beat you in footy tipping for probably the second time this year. I'm making a strong comeback on mm. just the tips. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you have faith in a fucking clown side like the Dockers. I agree. We'll take a look at what the rankings are at the moment, Drizzy. You are still ahead of me, but it's only by eight this week. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's only almost a whole round of tipping. Yeah, right? yeah, I still suck. But you are sitting still in the top 11 with 59. I have climbed. Actually, I've lost a spot, even though I got seven correct tips, because the league is still expanding. I will actually say, this league is up to 609 members now. So I'm actually getting closer to the top half. So <laughs> I'll take that as a win. Uh, I'm sitting on 51. And Dad, again, uh, is only four tips ahead of me in 110th. I got a notification this week saying, like, congratulations, you got six out of nine tips. I was like, fuck off, app. This is my worst week I've had yet, you yeah. dog. <laughs> We will shout out this week's winner of Just The Tips in the True Footy competition, Dre's, who got a perfect nine and a margin of three. So that's outstanding. It's got to be one of the best tipping performances we've seen all year. The overall leader, however, is still Mick Nah, who uh, retains his top spot with 62 and 261. So outstanding tipping. And the fantasy leader, gee, uh, he must be getting sick of these shout outs because it's happening week after week. I reckon this is like five in a row. Sean Carr is still at the top of the fantasy competition with You Gonna Cry, who has an average of 2022. I only got 1850 this round, and that's probably one of my best scores, so I suck. Good job, Sean Carr. He's got his foundations laid out quite solid, obviously, to Mm. be getting scores like this every week. So he selected well from the start. Credit to you. Yeah, and I think in big news for fantasy players as well, teams are finally getting announced on a Thursday again instead of the day before the game, which uh, which really screwed so many people over. Before we get into the video, I will shout out that this video is brought to you by our sponsors, NordVPN. If you want 70% off on a really high-quality VPN, and if you watch footy overseas and want to watch care, then this might be the answer, go to nordvpn.com forward slash truefooty and use the code truefooty. If you want more details on that, go look at the link in the description and follow the prompts. All right, it's time to find finally get into round 10 and there are some juicy matchups in this round first of all we got brisbane versus richmond a little bit of a quiet little rivalry burgeoning here with uh, a couple of finals performances between these two teams is that actually even true yeah that is true lions uh won five on the bounce and looking much more like their older self after Mm -hmm. a rocky start to the season looking real good jared Lyons is in top form had 37 possessions and something like nine clearances again brisbane have been pretty clinical in the last five rounds with uh the biggest win against port i think being their most impressive but they're still getting the job done they're coming up against the Richmond side who look a little bit El Depleto as they say in Spain who's out for him it's like Prestia Cochin um, Grimes Bolton. has missed Bolton missed as well with, uh, with that wrist injury so pretty depleted and uh, that was, that's been a challenge they've faced the last few years um, and they're still sort of within touching distance of finals but they stood up and withstood a really good challenge from the Giants Dusty stood up with four goals and 28 possessions. Like we say all the time, you can't write Richmond off. Who are you vibing for this huge class at the Gabba? Uh, Brisbane are in better form. It's at the Gabba. Never write off Richmond. Big win last week. But Brisbane are looking like they're really improving week to week. Richmond are looking like they're just grinding out results. So could be a great game. I'll tip the Lions though this week. I think Mm. they're the better side on current form at this point in the season. I agree, and I think if uh, if Brisbane hadn't won that exciting final in week one of the finals last year, then I probably wouldn't have as much confidence, but they've mm. at least got that hoodoo off their backs. They've beaten Richmond. I'm going to agree, Brisbane by 14 points. Hoodoo. Thank you. Game two of round 10 is a little less juicy, you could say. It is Carlton hosting Hawthorne at the MCG. Uh, Carlton coming off the back of a really tough game against Melbourne. No one really expected them to win that. Um, on the plus side, Sammy Walsh is still having a great season, and, and Paddy Cripps, I thought, was pretty yeah, good. Um, was I think good. he had 27 touches, 10 tackles, and a heap of pressure acts as well. Rizzi came out, he's battling like a, a back fracture or something like that. It was spinal fracture. Yeah, apparently it's BS though. Apparently. Oh, okay, is it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know um, well, no. Well, in the media, it's been pulled out like, oh, Patrick Cripps is fighting off an injury. And David Teague come out and said it was bullshit. So oh. we don't know. No one knows if that's actually happening or not. Okay, um, it's good content. Hawthorne were probably the biggest losers last week, uh, succumbing to North Melbourne, being the first team to lose to them all the way down in Tasmania. Not a lot of positive signs for the Hawks other than Wingard kicking a couple of great goals and having 21 touches. Uh, that was a game they really should have dropped. So they'll probably come into this game with, um, hopefully, think a bit of a point to prove. Who are you thinking in this absolute stinkathon? I mean, Carlton have had a rough month of um, of teams. They played mm. Port, Melbourne, Brisbane. Brisbane. So they've come out of that that dark alleyway that I like to say, the hard teams that they have to face. They're back on the highway now. They should beat Hawthorne. Um, they're a decent side, Carlton. I reckon they'll win this one pretty comfortably. Uh, I'll say they'll get up at home by 30. Three points. 33 points. I'm going to agree with you. Carlton are a better side. They should win this. Hawthorne are capable of winning this, but I'm going to say Hawthorne. 
I'm going to say Carlton by 24 points. The next game we have for you is Geelong versus Gold Coast at GMHBA Stadium, one of the toughest trips in football, and uh, Gold Coast will probably be quaking in their boots, oh, in my man. opinion. Um, first, we'll start with Geelong. Uh, I, want, I want to say lucky win against St Kilda, but St Kilda kicked five goals, 17. That game could have gone differently, mm -hmm. and uh, Geelong aren't a particularly a strong Marvel team, um, as people have talked about as well. Good for them to just bank another four points. Guthrie's continuing an elite season. I think he had 36 and now averages 31, which puts him probably close to top five for possessions this year. Um, so, you know, another good win for the Cats. And for Gold Coast, I think they should be really disappointed with the way they, they fronted up in that uh, Q clash. To go down by 73 points in a season where they've been competitive for, you know, a lot of their games, to be honest, um, they'll be really disappointed to go down like that to a rival. Who are you vibing for this game? Gold Coast is still shit. Like, I know mm. I'm a Frio fan and we've sucked forever, but also... Gold Coast, so like, look at them as well. Um, yeah, Geelong are going to absolutely dick Gold Coast this week. I'll put my house on it that I don't have. I want to see a Geelong circus here. I'm going to say Geelong by 48. Yeah, I don't think there's too much of a case to be made for a Gold Coast upset this week. I'll tip Geelong by 63 points nice. uh, in an absolute cheat clapping. Uh, I think Gold Coast do have a lot of injuries, so I'll say that for them. Um, they've got a lot of long-term injuries as well, but yeah, can't see them getting close. That'll be two cheat clappings in a row. Someone called that a double penetration. That's not what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an animal virgin. <laughs> Next game is a game I think actually could be a pretty good matchup. It's Adelaide hosting Melbourne at Adelaide Oval. Uh, Adelaide obviously travelled to Perth to take on the Eagles uh, without Tex, and I think they made a good account of themselves against the team that's very clinical, West Coast. Um, mm -hmm. Had far less inside 50s, but um, obviously put that uh, impact on the scoreboard. For Adelaide, I think Keys is continuing an incredible season. Mm. Probably hasn't really had the uh, the recognition, even from you know us on, on our channels, but 27 disposals, 5.6 clearances a game for a, a play that was delisted previously from Brisbane. Um, yeah, that's one they should be really happy with. And then we just talked about Melbourne getting the job done against Carlton. Probably didn't get out of, you know, third gear, as Caden was saying. They've got winners all over the park. So on yeah. talent, I feel like Melbourne are the far stronger side here. But I just feel like this is a way. Long winning streak for Melbourne. Ooh. I'm expecting a, a contest. So uh, okay. what, what are you expecting? Yeah, Adelaide aren't an easy beat, as you said. They're, mm. they're men North Melbourne, to be fair. Even though they're stinking it up at the bottom of the ladder, they play with heart, mm. which you can't say about a lot of Teams. Well, they got dicked at their last home game by GWS. They did. Um, Melbourne, obviously, a lot better side than GWS, so it could be stinky. I'll, I'll obviously pick uh, Melbourne to win this one. Uh, the margin fluctuates in my mind. It could be a close game, like you said, but I reckon Melbourne will probably get it done comfortably by 31 points. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with that. I don't expect Adelaide to win, but I think they could bring a good contest. I think Texas is going to be out for a while, so okay. he's not going to be back in. I'll say Melbourne by 25, but wouldn't be surprised if it's like 10. Next up, we have an elimination final rematch between the Bulldogs and St. Kilda. This was, uh, I want to say, one of the better finals we had in week one last year, but they were all absolutely <laughs> were crazy. crazy games. But uh, Bulldogs obviously coming off a really good win in Port Adelaide. I might even say it's a season-defining win to win away on the road in a tough trip to Adelaide uh, where Port, you know, are considered a, a good chance for top four. I think that really sort of consolidates their position as a contender this year. The Dogs, Tom Liberatore having a fantastic season as well. Uh, I think he leads the league in clearances per game with 9.8 and he had 12 uh, on the weekend against Port as well. So he's been fantastic. Hunter and English is all also likely to be in for the Dogs. Mm. On the St Kilda side of things, uh, they have been, you know, up and down this year and probably quite disappointed with what I think would probably be looked at as a winnable game against Geelong. Yeah, they so played well, though. They did, they did. But Just didn't convert. They, they, when you start dropping so many games as they did in the start of the year, to not you need to pinch back some of these mm -hmm. big games, and when you probably play well enough to win and don't, um, that could be also very deflating. So five goals, 17, absolute stinkathon. Uh, do you give them much of a chance of beating the Dogs? Well, their last matchup, they won. Mm -hmm. Yep, in, in Queensland. In that final. So, you know, they're in for a sniff. Uh, I just think Bulldogs are probably a top two side in the competition at the moment. Um, so I'll back the Bulldogs in. Um, but the Saints will play hard, whether they'll kick goals or not, because Max King kicks about as straight as bloody a rainbow. Ha, that was funny. That was actually good, yeah. It works on two levels because of like the whole gay connotation, but also, you know, rainbows are curved. They got to leave that in. I don't know. The Bulldogs are going to win this game. The Saints can't kick straight which is a bit annoying. I know what it's like. Um, but yeah, the Bulldogs, great, great side. With two huge ins as well. Like they're just reinforcing that side that's already as solid as they come in the league at the moment. Uh, the Bulldogs will win this one by 20 points. I'm going to say 28 to the Bulldogs. Next, we have Fremantle hosting Sydney at Optus Stadium. Again, I'm expecting a good contest here. I know you're very negative at the moment on Fremantle. They went to Marvel and uh, lost the game that was quite winnable, some would say. And I think for a team that's probably trying to cement themselves as a genuine chance for finals, I think that... Essendon probably snuffed out the last realistic chance. I think top top eight spots are, you know, sealing up quick and uh, Fremantle probably, um, 
you know, let it slip. Let it slip, you could say. Luke Ryan might be back in, Alex Pierce. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah, yeah, potentially. They've been talked about for like being a chance um, mm-hmm. for a while now. True. So, um, yeah, they should be back in. Potentially big ins. Uh, Sydney obviously beat Collingwood, who gave him a good challenge. I think Collingwood were up by like four or five goals at one point mm-hmm. in the second or third quarter. I want to say second quarter. Um, so to come home and have a mature win, that's, that's a really good response. And they've been sort of ticking over and getting decent results of recent weeks. Heaney, three goals and 22 possessions last week. Um, was a really, really good performance. And uh, someone that maybe people didn't expect to come on is Hayden McLean, the uh, tall key forward. I think he's from Tasmania. In the absence of Buddy, who's been in and out of the side most of the year, I think McLean's coming along nicely and might be a bit of an answer to their buddyless woes. Tell us who's going to win this game. I couldn't tell you. Could not tell you. Some weeks, Freo play like a waffle side. Other weeks, they play like they could make the top eight. So, absolutely no idea. Usually, our first halves at home are what win us those games. Um, But we can't really kick straight either. So, Mm. fuck knows. Sydney are looking good. They've beaten good sides this year. One of the most shocking performances of the season as a fan. Uh, on the weekend against Essendon. So yeah, I'm very negative on the Dockers at the moment. So for that reason, I'm just going to tip Sydney just to fuel my negativity. But I am hope, hope I'm proved wrong. I'll, I'll go Sydney by 25 and the Dockers fans to walk out halfway through the last quarter. I'm going to disagree with you here. I think Sydney are very beatable. I think he'll be back in Perth for the first time in a few weeks. And Luke Ryan back into the side. Maybe Alex Pierce. I think Freeman will get the job done by seven points. We've got three games left to look at. We've got a really good game, in my opinion. Uh, potential mini final before the finals, because I feel like only one of these sides will play finals this year. GWS versus West Coast Eagles at the Giant Stadium uh, on the GWS ledger. They've been putting in some really good performances, but battling just constant injuries. Uh, who is it out for their back line? Back line? It was Davis, Haynes, and Keith. Um, but yeah, their young backs held up really well um, with some of the young guys that they've got into that team. They've copped two more injuries. Green's going to be out for this contest, and Perryman uh, was subbed out with a hamstring injury. Toby? So. Yeah, Toby Green. Oh. Yeah, not Toby Green. Yeah. On the positive side, uh, Finn Layson and Haynes potentially back in. Um, mm-hmm. But either way, yeah, there's a, it's a lot of disruption to this side that, you know, obviously took it right up to Richmond, but couldn't quite get the points, and that might be a little bit deflating for them. The Eagles had a bit of, uh, you know, not much to write home about game against Adelaide. Got the job done against a team that. Played to a reasonable standard. Uh, some lapses weren't, weren't the most clean. And to be honest, when I was watching them in the last quarter, I thought this team looked really tired and fatigued. And I actually came into this video expecting to tip GWS. But I'm feeling differently now because Ryan and Hearn are most likely back in for West Coast. Ooh, huge Couple with Toby Green out. I'll ask you your opinion. Who do you think is going to win? This? Yeah, I see West Coast winning this game, to be honest. They're in good form. The Giants are as well. But I don't know. I, I have... Faith in West Coast is a good side. I, I see them winning this game. So, yeah, I'll tip the Eagles. It'll probably be a good game, though. I'll tip West Coast by 17. The injured players coming back in probably gives a boost. And if it weren't for Toby Green going out, I'd probably tip the Giants. But I'll tip the Eagles by 16. The ultimate game of the round is Collingwood versus Port Adelaide. MTG. Battle of the prison bars, you could say. <laughs> Collingwood disappointing in Sydney in a way. Um, a team, it's a ground they have a good record in, actually. They generally play quite well at the SCG specifically. I think they had won like 13 of the last 19 going into that game and then got four or five goals ahead. And mm. yeah, it looked like they were going to uh, run away with it, but Sydney just clawed them back and they kind of just stopped. Port Adelaide, you know, equally disappointing at home against a contender. Their losses this year, uh, despite being, what, six and three, I think they are, they've lost to the Lions. West Coast and now the Bulldogs. Now, the Lions of West Coast were away, but for me, the concern is when you start dropping games at home to contenders, it kind of makes you look a little bit further away from the pack um, than maybe you actually are. So mm-hmm. they probably need to improve their performances against big teams. That being said, I don't think Collingwood's a particularly big team. So who do you think is going to win this game? Bang, boom, shots taken and that. Bang, bang. I think it's fair to say they're bottom two, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you said, Porter are a better side. Played well in parts against the Bulldogs, to be fair to them. Only lost by three goals, but yeah, the Bulldogs are a really good side. Just need to play four quarters. They can't get behind on the scoreboard early, but I don't think Collingwood really pose that threat to that back line off uh, off the power. I don't know, Collingwood haven't been clicking this year. It's pretty easy to say. I think Porter are a better side and they'll win this game by 28 points. Yep, no arguments for me. Another player I'd like to highlight is Ollie Wines. 32 and a goal and fourth in the league for possession. So he's having a little quiet, you don't want to say breakout year. He's probably improved quite linear, but yeah. uh, obviously in the peak of his career now and you know taking Port Adelaide to the next level. It came at a loss, but uh, I think they'll get the job done this week. They'll win by, yeah, 31 points. Final game of the round this Sunday afternoon blockbuster. We've got Essendon hosting North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. That makes me sick. (laughs) That is such a shit game. (laughs) 
Essendon got the chocolates against your boys. Um, I don't know what your thoughts on the overall standard of the game, whether you pressed it with Essendon, what do you make of them? Oh, uh, yeah, they can get the ball into the 50 and hit leads. So, that, yeah, yeah, credit to them. I've got good players. Darcy Parrish is yep. really good. He's up there with the elite, I think, now. Like, mm. he's really looking real well. And, yeah, some good role players that actually play with a lot of intensity and play with heart, unlike the Dockers team. So, um, yeah, no, nah, Essendon. Decent uh, bottom end side. They're not going to make the top eight, obviously, but yeah. um, they can push 12th. Decent side. Yeah, and Parrish's form is just it's stupid. Mm. Like 39 touches and 10 clearances. He's, that's all Australian form. He like, played on five yesterday and was the better player. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. That's outstanding. Great to see a young player sort of break out and hit that form. Uh, on the north side, the Ledger finally got their first win of the season. Um, so, as we said on the Drew Footy Show on Drewsy's channel, they're the winners of this week after being losers of the week last week. Um, yeah, no, really good for them to, to break their duck. Simkin and Cunnington had 75 touches between them. Um, Simkin's a player that really needs to take the next step, and mm. sometimes he does, but he doesn't quite do it as consistently. But he's a player that I really like, um, and they should uh, have a lot of faith in him taking the club forward. But North came back from like 32 points down as well. It shows they've got a bit of spirit, and hopefully they can take a bit of momentum in this game. Do you think they can go two from two and beat Essendon here? No. Okay. I reckon Essendon get the job done. Yeah, no, nah, to be fair, Essendon played well against Rio. Um, it wasn't the lack of Essendon skill that disappointed me in that game. It was the lack of Frio heart and mm. uh, hunger to win that game. So I might be salty at Frio saying, oh, Essendon are shit, Essendon are this, Essendon are that. Essendon have been competing week in, week out. They beat, they're very close to beating the Giants. As you said, they've lost games by one, two, and three points this year. Big win against Collingwood. So they're not going to be scared by North Melbourne. They're going to win this game. And I've got a couple messages from Essendon fans saying, why don't you rate Essendon? They're all right. They're decent. They're not anywhere near the finals picture, but like they're a developing side. So... Shout out to the Bombers. You'll win this game this week. Another four points chalked up on the board. Uh, you'll win it by probably 24 points. Yep, I'm going to agree with you. Essendon by 27 and tipping Gordy to pick four. So as we so often do, unless we forget, we'll nominate our upset of the rounds. Drewsy, is there a game you think that an upset is a stinky chance of winning? Uh, I mean, like, if you look at the odds, Richmond are up, uh, uh, the underdog, so I mean, they could potentially win it. Uh, uh, but... I'm looking for more like a true underdog here. Someone mm. that very few people would tip. Mm, yeah. I might go with the Giants. Hard to believe we prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say maybe, maybe the Giants. Like the Giants not very good chances to be. Yeah, I don't, I don't think don't that's know. an underdog. All right, if you're if you're gonna, I got two, so I'll spe- Well, they're hot like that. A position in that. Yeah. All right, Bulldogs and St Kilda. Only because St Kilda, are, uh, like a, there's a good team under there somewhere. Beat them last year. They can catch them napping after a really good win. Um, I don't think that would be the biggest shock. And maybe I'll say Adelaide as well, but I don't really believe in that one. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll lock in St Kilda. I'll lock in the Giants. According to betting odds, GWS are going into that West Coast game uh, underdogs. So, upset of the round, I'm going to GWS. All right. All right. I think that's a lame one because I think they're just pretty 50 50, to be honest. But. I mean, ladder position and, and the bloody sports bet odds. All right. I'll have it. I'll take it. All right. Thanks for watching Just the Tips this week, guys. Make sure to go check out Drewsy's channel for the Drew Footy Show, a show that we do every week, pretty much released at this time. So it should be up by now when we look at the previous round results. So do go subscribe to that. Do go check out the link in the description to our sponsors, NordVPN, for a great VPN service. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.